Hi guys, Shane here, Oz Flight Simulator. Welcome to another test drive video. In today's video, we are testing out some hardware. We've got the honeycomb yoke. It's been sitting here for a while, been waiting to give it a go. Hey guys, Shane here, Oz Flight Simulator. Welcome to another test drive video. In today's video, we are testing out some hardware. We've got the honeycomb yoke. It's been sitting here for a while, been waiting to give it a go. So if you haven't seen these videos before, this is where we take our scenery and aircraft utility in all different types of flight simulators. We'll take it for a spin around the block. I'll give you my first impressions and is it, and I will say, is that a value for money? So today's video is the honeycomb yoke. So it's a bit of a hardware video. So I've had it sitting in HQ for a while now. Um, and I'm really excited to see, is it value for money to get uh, basically a yoke uh, for the segment of market that it's in? Um, as you know, I've been using the, the um, Yoko yoke, I should say, for a while. And also, I've had the SciTech yoke, but we're going to leave that for another review. We're going to do a comparison later on. But this is, we're just going to check out the my first impressions. Um, we're going to set it up. Um, we're going to use it in P3D, we're going to use it in X-Plane and just see how it feels and um, how it works. So we've been saying that, let's cut to the unboxing because we haven't even looked at it yet and then um, we'll see you when we've got it set up. So she's already unboxed, but as for boxes goes, boxes look pretty good. This was a pretty tidy box. They really um, retailed their um, stuff up. But anyways, we've absolutely smashed that. But as for boxes, I'm a type of tech guy where I keep all my boxes for all my stuff just in case I want to sell it a little bit later. But um, it's a good looking box. But we'll grab the actual yoke itself and it is a lot heavier than what I anticipated. Um, Generally, the, the heavier things weigh, the higher quality they are, but um, straight off the bat, initial thoughts, the feel of the finish is a lot smoother. That feels pretty high quality. Um, and switches feel, initially feel good. Actually feel like the Cytex which is a little bit like the sound. And then, yeah, but anyways, we'll get into, we'll get into it, eh? But initial, that, that's a lot heavier than what I thought it was gonna be, but also comes with, some brackets, so these brackets here you'll be able to mount at to the desk and if you have an earthquake it'll still be on your desk by the looks of it. And we got USB, USB-C and then I think this is like, <laughs> looks like a phone cable, ethernet cable. Um, I think that goes from the yoke to the actual yoke part. And then obviously that's the base part for the, um, the mounts. And then obviously, and we've got the literature as well, which looks like some screws or something like that, but I'll have a bit of a read of that behind the scenes and um, we'll see what it's all about. So there's a couple of ways you can actually mount this. One is you can use the 3M um, sticker underneath here and then plant it down there and then basically that'll stop moving. But I don't wanna have to wash it with soap and look after it. So I'm actually gonna use the, the mounting plate that comes with it, or the mounting brackets. Um, so we'll sit that down there, and we're gonna grab each mounting plate. So the main thing it is, I need to align and make sure the desk is in the right spot. So we'll just undo the little thing there, that's one. Probably a good thing to get these lined up in the right spot before we go hard, but these are solid plates so we'll make sure that we've got everything lined up the way that we want it to and then same thing that I do with some of the other yokes then we'll tighten these up so they don't go anywhere now 
this part here and lock it in and then we want to unscrew these. These will actually then push into the plate and keep it um, steady. So we'll see how we go um, with that and that's basically pretty much all installed from there. Locked in. And then and that's pretty solid. That is not going anywhere. If I move it up, there's a lot. There's not much give in there for sure. So now we just grab our little Ethernet cable thing here that goes in one side there, and then plug straight into the other one here. Snap. Alrighty, so we're pretty much installed. The only thing I need to put in is the USB. So it's um, USB-C and then into just a USB 2 by the looks of it um, that goes in the back. But it looks, the finish is quite good. It's got a matte black that I sort of mentioned up the top there. I think that would scratch quite easy if you put your um, your fingernail on there. And that follows through to the, um, to the, the yoke itself. And the horns up the top here are Bit of a glossy sort of look there but um with the initial with the buttons um the trim feels quite good the trim up and down you just got to use the double trim which is nice and you got rudder trim over here um the push the torque and these white buttons up the top and this red one they feel really plastic see the hat switch doesn't feel too bad so that's pretty good i guess um but if we actually feel what the yoke is it doesn't have much trouble um, but you've got a bit of force there and you've got a detent in the middle. It doesn't click in, but you can sort of feel it. And if I move, oh, nice. 90 degrees and that's what you really need. Um, there's not much pressure. It feels really light. There's no detent there at all. But it just, it feels a bit too light for me. But a lot better than some of the previous other stuff that's, that's around. But as for the buttons, I'll bring the camera around so you can see. But as for the buttons, so you've got master, avionics, and then all your switches. So beacon, landing, taxi, nav and strobe. So all the lights that you require. And then, oops, missed that one. And then over here, you've got your ignition on, which is quite nice, even though it's on the wrong side for most of the things there, but that's pretty good anyway. Okay, so we've got X-Plane up on this screen now. So first thing it's going to ask us can calibrate it, but it's picked up the device pretty much straight away. It's called Alpha Flight Controls. Here, which we can see it's asking to calibrate now. Looks like it's picked up all the switches. So we'll just do a calibration. Um, do roll to the left, to the right, and push, pull. That's all calibrated. All good, and then there we go and do its thing. Done, and then we're just going to check everything. So, hat switch is all lighting up, trim, pitch down, pitch up. It's doing what it should be doing, flaps down a notch. The flaps up a notch and rudder roll right. Yep. Okay. And what's that one? They've got that for flight director and do nothing. So do, we won't play around with that now. But battery master on, avionics on, bus one and two. Turn those off. Beacon lights. Taxi lights, landing lights, nav lights, strobe light, and then key. There we go. So everything's set up. Like, that's pretty cool. So I know that Austin Myers and Laminar did some stuff ready to go for this, which is really cool. So well done. So wonder, I'll be interested to see if prepared's going to be that good. But um, we're going to quickly jump in the sim and do a quick um, Cessna fly around, and um, we'll see how she goes. All right, so brakes are going off. If I seem like I'm shouting, it's because I got my headset on and I'm trying to overcome that. So we're just going to pull out of the taxiway. Um, we're going to turn taxi lights off, landing lights can go on. Our trim is set.
and there's no crosswinds, we're straight down the runway, so it should just pull back straight on 60. Oh, there we go, just popped up. Interesting, it feels a little bit um, a bit delayed and sluggish, just like the um, the real thing. That's quite interesting. Push down. I'd probably have to send some response curves up, I think, for the um, for the travel. For the travel, I should say. Um, we'll make a right hand turn, we'll do a bit of a pattern but the uh, the roll to the left and right feels pretty accurate I would think like I I don't fly I'm sorry I haven't flown Cessnas before but I've flown other aircraft so and we'll just use the hat switch to see where we are won't be the perfect circuit but um back so you can see the um, gotta get used to using the trim twice for x-plane using both well So my first initial thoughts is, there we go, so we're on parallel, so we're on our downward leg, is, I get that right, for a low to mid-range yoke, this feels pretty good. Like, that roll is really nice. X-Plane's done it well to configure really well to, with the aircraft. I would just have to say, the push and pull back on the yoke's a bit too fine. So I would um, put a response curve in that. See if we beam the numbers. Now it's a long runway here, so we're at the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia. I really like the roll on the um, on the yoke. It's nice. A bit too early, actually. That's how you not do a circuit, folks. But it, the only, my only thing would say the yoke just feels a little bit too light. Very smooth though, very smooth on the roll. And we've made the runway, so we'll pull back. Eyes to the end. That would have been a pretty hard landing, so I'd definitely put a um, a response curve in for the push and pull back on the yoke. But that was explain. We're going to quickly check out and see what happens in P3D or prepared. Right, so we're in prepared. We're on runway 14. We're in the um, just flight 152. So we're going to see how that goes. We're at the Gold Coast again. Bit of a short field takeoff there. I think there's a bit more work to do in prepared with the yoke, actually, to get it set up. See how she rolls. We'll keep climbing up though. Get to a thousand feet. Well, 
a bit of down trim. It's pretty touchy. It's very, 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 very touchy and prepared, so you definitely have to set up some response curves. Explain how the box works better, but um, I don't think it would take much work, probably about half an hour of flying around. If you never set up response curves before, obviously it um, would be a bit of a pain to do. But it definitely feels a lot smoother in X-Plane than what it does. Australian Prepared, but compared to other yokes in its um, competitors in the marketplace for um, this price range, it feels pretty good. All right, so we'll begin our base turn. We want a bit of up trim. Actually, a bit more, a fair bit of up trim. There we go. I think we've getting the the 152 starting to get it dialed in, trimmed up. Definitely a bit more of a, a handful to fly, but we are using a different aircraft as well. But definitely the, the force on the, um, the travel backwards and forwards is a lot more. You can feel the aircraft getting a bit sloshy as we're slowing down, which that's what should happen. And we should go around. <laughs> we should definitely be going around, but we won't. And that's a bad landing. And that's um, prepared. So I would say this is an ace straight out of the box in uh, X plane. But uh, when it comes to prepared, you've got to you got a bit of work on your hands to um, to get it get it to work. So my final thoughts on the honeycomb yoke: Is it a value for money? Should you spend your hard-earned cash? Um, with this yoke. Well, me, I will categorize it into probably the cheaper to mid-range when it comes to yoke. It's not definitely not up in the high sort of premium range, but it's in the range of cheap to mid, which has been for a large part of the time sort of SciTech owned region. And um, this one is gonna be a good competitor in the market uh, for that type of yoke. So if you want your first beginner yoke, I actually think it's really good. I think it's good at value for money. Um, I think you can pick it up for 249 USD. Um, the pros and cons, so out of the box works really well with X-Plane. Out of the box, um, it doesn't work so well with P3D, but nothing ever does. You gotta do a bit of work in there. But I had a wow moment. Um, but how it sort of felt when I, I flew it around within um, P3D. The roll really needs to have a bit more pressure on it. Um, as for the push and pull, um, there's a bit of pressure there, so that feels pretty pretty good. All the switches work completely fine, um, and you've got the right buttons on there. You've got avionics, you've got um, battery on there, you've got all the lights on there, you've got your starter on there. Um, all the switches seem to be pretty good. The only sort of thing I see, like it's got a nice matte finish, but I think I've already scratched it already, so I don't think that's gonna last or it's not gonna look in mint condition. Um, but we've been saying that they've got a fraudulent quadrant on the way, so that's to another 249 USD, so that should be a nice um, match. So if you are in the market and you're looking for um, your first joke, I highly recommend this guy. And, but we've been saying that we're going to have a new video coming up soon, and what we'll do, we'll do a comparison, get the SciTech against Honeycomb and gets Yoko. So basically cheap, medium range and premium. So stay tuned for that. So we've been saying that, please hit a thumbs up if you liked the video, leave a comment what you think. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer them in the comments um, for you. If you're new to the Old White Simon channel, please hit that subscribe button. And if you want to see more content in that, please let me know. I'll be happy to do more hardware content if you guys um, want to see it. But I'm going to leave one of my other favorite videos up here. Why don't you jump over there and I'll see you on that one. Cheers.